I will. I promise me that. So when I yeah. say f you, roll over, roll the f over. I will. Police officers are an important aspect of life, and people often forget they have lives of their own. However, their personal lives should never interfere with their work. Like in our first case of today, where a female officer makes a huge mistake because of some of her personal matters. So, I mean, you've been doing this, you've been doing this for a year, but I've been doing this for about 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I do field sobriety, yes or no? No, I haven't been drinking. Okay, I'm gonna place you under arrest. Put your hands right there. Okay. I will call my supervisor, but put your hands behind your back. Who are you gonna call? Boyfriend. Well, you're gonna make phone calls later, but not right now. This incident occurred on September 19th, 2022, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. An officer stopped a woman for driving over the speeding limit. The woman, an off-duty police officer named Hernandez, parked as she saw the officer's light. The officer walked to the vehicle and questioned Hernandez, asking for her documents. Hernandez reeked of alcohol to which the officer pointed out, but she denied the allegations. He decided to perform a field sobriety test, but Hernandez refused. This forced the officer to carry out necessary measures, which was arresting Hernandez. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I have my duty gun in my glove box. Your what? In my glove box. Okay. I'm also giving you a state police. Can you yes. the car? Okay. Okay. Even That's though you're strange. even though you're chewing gum or whatever, mm -hmm. there's alcohol I can smell. Your eyes are a little red. An officer steps out of his vehicle after stopping a driver. The driver was apparently going above the speed limit. The officer greeted her and she informed him she was an off-duty police officer. The woman, named Hernandez, searched for her documents while saying she was coming from her boyfriend's house. She claims to have been confused by the officer, thinking he wanted her to go faster instead of slower. The officer instructs her to turn off her vehicle and step out. He points out that she is parked in the middle of the road and questions her ability as a police officer. Hernandez has been an officer for about a year, and she apologizes for her poor parking. She steps out of the vehicle, and the officer notices that she smells like alcohol. The smell of alcohol is what made him ask her to step out of the car. He notices that her eyes are red, and she's chewing gum to try and mask the smell of alcohol. I'm tired. I'm just no, trying yeah, to go well, home. I don't understand. It's 2 in the morning, mm -hmm. but uh, order alcohol and then... Blotchy watery eyes, those two kind of. Uh. So, I mean, you've been doing this. You've been doing this for a year, but I've been doing this for about 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I do field sobriety, yes or no? No, I haven't been drinking. Hernandez claims that she's just tired and trying to get home because it's 2 a.m. The officer sees that her eyes are watery, and Hernandez says she got into a fight with her boyfriend. The fight is her personal business and she claims she didn't have anything to drink that night. The officer says he has been doing his job for years, and he knows when he smells alcohol. He decides to perform a field sobriety test on Hernandez, but she continues denying it. The officer mentions that he has been doing his job for over 13 years, and he knows when someone is lying about drinking. He asks her again to perform the fiend sobriety test, but Hernandez refuses. Okay, I'm gonna place you under arrest. Put your hands right there. Because you know the field supervisor is optional, okay? okay? I can't, can I can't force it. Supervisor, please? I will call my supervisor, but put your hand Do you understand? Yes. Question again. Do you agree to take our test, breathalyzer test? No. Okay. I consider your actions or refusal to be tested. Thank you. The officer is forced to arrest Hernandez because she refused to perform the field sobriety test. He asks her to put her hands behind her back. Hernandez asks the officer to call his supervisor, and he agrees. The dash cam shows the officer arresting Hernandez. He asks who she'd like to call but says she'll make the call later. He asks why she requested his supervisor, and reminds her he can still smell the alcohol that's coming from her. He wants to know what his supervisor can do for her because he is asleep. The officer pats her down to ensure she isn't carrying any dangerous items. He places her in the patrol vehicle, as she continues asking for the supervisor. The officer communicates with dispatch and they inform him there's a supervisor on duty. He reads Hernandez her rights and points out that she will lose her license for a year if she refuses to take the breathalyzer test and is convicted in court. 
Are you good with that? Like I'd swear, like I'm. I'm well, let me let me ask let me ask the officer because again, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, like I said, but yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't have a problem if you're a boyfriend and figure you guys need to start figuring stuff out. But just give me a second, okay? Oh. A man arrives at the scene and talks to the officer. At this point, the supervisor is on the ground. The man informs the supervisor he is Hernandez's boyfriend. The sergeant informs the man that one of his officers arrested Hernandez for speeding. He confirms that the man is a police officer. The sergeant is also trying to figure out the entire situation as he arrived not long ago. The man tells the sergeant that Hernandez is his designated driver and vouches that she didn't have anything to drink. The sergeant explained that it was not his call to determine if she was drinking or not. They are trying to get a hold of Hernandez's sergeant because her duty weapon and other items are in her vehicle. The man asks if he can talk to Hernandez, but the sergeant states that he must ask the arresting officer first. Hey brother, her, uh, her boyfriend's also also PD. He's here. He just kind of like came out of the bushes here. He's, he's asking uh, if it's all right with you because I told him I don't make that decision if he could talk with her. No. no? Okay. He's intoxicated as well. The sergeant walks to the arresting officer and informs him that Hernandez's boyfriend, who is also an officer, is present. He informs the arresting officer that the supposed boyfriend is also intoxicated. The arresting officer refuses the request, and the sergeant returns to the man. He passes the message, and the off-duty officer understands the reasons. He says he wants to be around in case Hernandez needs to be bailed out. The sergeant instructs him to write down his number so Hernandez can communicate with him if he isn't present. The boyfriend decides to leave, and the sergeant assures him that Hernandez will be alright. The sergeant returned to the other officers, and they wondered how Hernandez's boyfriend suddenly arrived and left. On the road, uh, approached the car, she's got a little alcohol, blush of water eyes. She tells me right away that she works for LCPD, she's an officer. Yeah. I asked her where she was coming from, she didn't tell me. I said, have you been drinking? No. She was chewing gum too. I said, I can smell alcohol. I said, can you exit the vehicle? She got out of the car. I said, I can smell it from you now. I said, it's pretty obvious. Her eyes were red too. Hernandez's sergeant eventually arrives, and the arresting officer fills him in on the situation. The sergeant confirmed that Hernandez was new to the police force. The officers take the sergeant to where his issued weapon and items are, and he takes them. He appreciates the officers for their work and leaves the scene. The arresting officer returns to his vehicle, where Hernandez is still sitting, and buckles her seatbelt. He then begins driving, and takes her to the police department. Hernandez was charged with aggravated driving under the influence, speeding, and negligent use of a deadly weapon. God damn, Julia, I gotta be God damn. It, it's not gonna have anything to do with me, sweetheart. You drive me on the floor! I want you! The incident in this video occurred in San Antonio, Texas, on July 5, 2018. Officers can be seen arresting a woman who was found to be in possession of drugs. The woman struggles as the officer attempts to arrest her. She claims to be innocent, but the officers think otherwise. The woman, named Kimberly Ann Esparza, was allegedly six months pregnant at the time of arrest. Although she was pregnant, she didn't hesitate to resist the officers, kicking the female officer. The arresting officer, named Elizabeth Montoya, had had enough, and used some extreme force on Esparza. Things took a drastic turn when Esparza insulted Montoya while in the patrol vehicle. Montoya retaliated by striking and punching Esparza multiple times, and pulling her out of the vehicle by her hair. You feel it when there's something there? Spread your legs. Spread your legs. Spread your legs, I'm not gonna ask you again. Watch out, man! Don't do it. Body cam footage shows a female officer named Elizabeth Montoya searching a woman. The woman, Kimberly Ann Esparza, is in possession of drugs, and the officers search her to see if she possesses any more. Officer Montoya instructs her to spread her legs in order to search her lower regions. Esparza refuses to heed the officer's instructions and begins struggling. The officers push her against a patrol vehicle while telling her to cooperate with them. Esparza begins yelling at the officers as she says they should let her go. They ask her if she is going to stop resisting, but she refuses and continues screaming. The officers hold Esparza's arms in an awkward position, and she says they are hurting her. The officers drag her to the ground, and Montoya instructs her not to kick them. She threatens to break Esparza's arm if she kicks them again. Esparza continues struggling, 
while the officers place her on her side. I don't take drugs! Yes, you do. That's why you had a Xanax in your bra. God damn, do it. You're going to be so God damn. It, it's not going to have anything to do with me, sweetheart. You dragged me out the floor! Watch out! The officers stood Esparza up and moved her to the patrol vehicle. Montoya places her inside, but Esparza claims she doesn't take drugs. She begins insulting Montoya, and Montoya doesn't like that. She begins punching Esparza, striking her face multiple times. The other officers rush to stop her as she drags Esparza to the ground. Montoya claims that Esparza was kicking her, but Esparza cries while on the ground. Yeah, she always kept trying to put her arm in. She went like that, her leg, and she kicked me. She kicked me when I was holding her, too. More officers arrived at the scene, and Officer Montoya explained the situation to them. She tells them how Esparza resisted arrest and kicked her, forcing her to strike Esparza multiple times. The male officer goes to the suspect, while Officer Montoya goes to confirm what drug they found on Esparza. She says she wanted to hit Esparza's side, but had to strike her head. Some officers remained with Esparza, while Officer Montoya continued moving around. Montoya also requested a wagon, and dispatch informed her they were sending one. An officer informs her that Esparza has two felonies and confirms the drug she was in possession of is Xanax. Officer Montoya walks toward the area and says she will hit Esparza in the face again if she has to. She returns to another officer and asks if he will take photos of where Esparza struck her. He informs them that Esparza kicked her twice. I was searching her. When I searched her, she had drugs in her bra. I'm like, hey, stand still. She's like, can you pull my shirt down? And she started pulling at her shirt, so I thought maybe she had some more in there because I pulled her bra out. I was like, stop messing with your shirt. And she's like, I, she's like, can't you pull it down? I was like, when I'm done, I will fix you. Stand still, stop moving around. Another patrol vehicle arrived, and Officer Montoya began explaining the situation to the officer. She shows the officer the stain from where Esparza kicked her. She directs the officer to where Esparza is being held and returns to her vehicle. Officer Montoya also informs the others that Esparza wanted to smoke a cigarette just before they found drugs on her. They walk toward Esparza, and Officer Montoya assures them that she is fine. She says they can call someone else to check her, but she's faking being unconscious. Keep in mind that Esparza is being held on the cold, hard ground, and it's raining. She is also six months pregnant. Officer Montoya says Esparza was in a stolen truck and was stealing items from a house. She describes the truck and refers the officer to her colleague for more details. I don't want to stick you. Does she lady. have injuries? Or? I don't know. I hit her in the face. I can't see. Yeah. I mean, am I going to need to go to the hospital or anything? No, I'll be, I'll be all right. And when she kicked me, I heard she kicked me. And like I said, I let it go the first time, not the second time. An officer asks Officer Montoya if Esparza sustained any injuries during the altercation. Montoya says she isn't aware of any injuries, but further confirms that she hit Esparza in the face. She then clarified that neither kick happened at the same time. The first was when she was searching for the suspect, and the second was when she placed Esparza in the patrol vehicle. She asks the medics if she needs to go to the hospital, but they say she doesn't. They then informed her that the sergeant would be on the scene soon. Officer Montoya doesn't seem remorseful for striking Esparza multiple times. After further investigation, Officer Elizabeth Montoya was fired by the San Antonio Police Department for the inhumane treatment of a suspect. She was also cited for muting her body cam when she wasn't supposed to. Kimberly Ann Esparza was charged with assaulting an officer and resisting arrest. However, the charges were dismissed. Knock it off or I'll do it in your I'm done. I'm done. I promise I'm done. Yeah, I will fing tase you with the dust. I promise I'm done. Knock it off! I will. I promise I'm done. This incident occurred on May 21st, 2023, in Vancouver, Washington. Two Vancouver police officers, Gabriel Patterson and Andrea Mendoza, 
responded to a call from a Walmart employee. The employee was from the loss prevention department and informed the officers of two individuals who attempted to steal items from the store by hiding them. The officers intercepted the suspects, confirming their identity from the description given to them. They informed the suspects that they aren't free to leave, as there has been a reported theft. The suspects decided to make a run for it, but the officers got hold of the man, who was identified as 19-year-old Elijah Joffre Prejean. The struggle took a strange turn as Elijah's genitals were exposed, and a threat to cause them harm was made by the female officer. Hey, go ahead and stop yeah. for me. Come on. Well, where you got me? Yep, I told you you're under arrest. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why are you... You press me the balls? Yeah, you think you got me, but I let you. Control point there. See, I got one running to the north. I'm relaxing. That's fine. Thank you. Relax right there. This is for a stupid theft. Theft of what? Well, we're gonna f figure it out. Let's try. Alright, he's gonna roll to me. Do you? Yep. Yeah. I got you. Oh, I can heal myself. Nope. Thank you. The officers arrive at the scene and confront the suspects. They grab hold of the male suspect as the female makes a run for it, leaving her accomplice behind. The male suspect, who is later identified as 19-year-old Elijah Joffe Prejean, is taken to the ground by the officers. They attempt to place handcuffs on him while on the floor, but Elijah begins to struggle. The female officer, Andrea Mendoza, says he is being arrested for a stupid theft, and they'll find out the truth. Elijah suddenly struggles and strikes the officers while attempting to escape. Officer Patterson follows Elijah and takes him down again. The struggle continues, and Officer Andrea is forced to use her taser on him. Or I'll do it in your nuts! You I'm done! I'm done! I promise, I'm done! Yeah, I will tase you with the dust. I'm telling you, I'm done! Knock it off! I will! I promise, I'm done! So when I yeah. say f you, roll over! Roll the f over! I will. Now! Okay. Hands on him! I put my hands on my neck. No, hey, you do exactly what I say, what I say. I no, you're past that, man. I said I will. Yeah, your other hand, you're going to put in the small of your back. I can't breathe, my Your other hand, put it in the small of your back. Ditch. I'll take I'm care of it. Put it in the small of your back and do it now. I'm going to pass I'm going to help you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have some food here. We are code four. It's a medical. Code three. Uh -huh. This can't breathe. And we need a supervisor. Yeah. Can you up that medical to code three? I've got uh, early 20s black male complaining of not being able to breathe. On your side, on your side. I just run my neck. Yep, I see that. I see that. I see that. We're on the west side. West side. Of Walmart. Right next to our yeah, I got you. Your breathing issue I right appreciate now. it. Right next to you go, my partner got Thank you. We have two cover cars rolling up. 97, everyone else, slow down. He's been up his own face over. Uh two of the out. We have a female. 
other units coming in, check for a female, her description of the call. She took off running, yeah, uh, right northbound, now. behind Walmart. For land on your 30, you want to land your butt. Yeah. Officer Andrea threatens Elijah and says she will tase his jeans. She pulls his pants down and points the taser at his genitals, proving that her threat is to be taken seriously. Elijah promises that he is done struggling and says he will obey their instructions. Officer Andrea instructs him to roll over, and Elijah obeys her instructions. They instruct him to lie on his belly and place his hands on his back so they can put him in handcuffs. Elijah doesn't hesitate to do what he is told, and lies on his belly. Officer Patterson places his knee on Elijah's back and puts the handcuffs on his wrists. He places Elijah on his side and cuts a piece of clothing that's choking him. Backup arrives shortly after, and Officer Andrea informs them of the female suspect who ran away. Following this, Elijah received treatment from the paramedics on the scene before being taken to a hospital. He was eventually charged with third-degree assault and third-degree theft. Officer Andrea was immediately placed on administrative leave following an initial interview. An officer pulled over a driver who was apparently speeding. The driver, a state representative named Georgian Louie, informed the officer that she was on her way home after the Super Bowl. The officer asked her for her documents, but noticed the smell of alcohol coming from her. Louie was unable to produce all her documents, and the officer asked her to step out of the vehicle. He decided to perform a field sobriety test on her, after she claimed not to have had many drinks. The test was to determine if she was fit to be driving. Hello. Hi. Can I see your license, please? Yes. Uh, the reason why I'm stopping you, you were speeding a little bit, ma'am. Sorry, I was in a hurry to get home. Okay, what's going on? No, I'm just tired. Is it, whose car is this? Mine. Can I see your insurance, please? So, where are you coming from? I was from just friend's house. I smelled something similar to alcoholic beverages. How much did you drink tonight? I had like two glasses of beer. Two glasses of beer? How yeah. long ago? Um, half time party. Let me let me look at your eyes, ma'am. Look at me. Uh, your eyes look a little bit watery, like glassy. Okay. I'm a legislator, so we haven't had much sleep. Body cam footage shows an officer approaching a vehicle he stopped for speeding. He knocks on the window, and the driver lowers it. The officer asks the driver for her license and says he stopped her because she was speeding. The driver, a state representative named Georgine Lewis, says she was in a hurry to get home because she was tired. The officer asks who owns the car and requests the car's insurance, as Louis confirms that it's hers. She says she's coming from a friend's house, and the officer looks into the vehicle with the aid of his flashlight. Louis says she isn't with her documents. The officer suddenly smells alcohol coming from the vehicle and asks Lewis how much she has had to drink that night. Lewis claims to have had only a few drinks, and the officer notices that her eyes are watery. She claims she hasn't had much sleep because she is a legislator, and they don't get enough sleep. She showed the officer her license plate, but they weren't attached to the vehicle. So to me, you're just another citizen, another right. driver totally, on the road. Totally, totally yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, I would like to administer some sobriety tests. Okay. If at the end of my evaluation I think you're okay to drive, you'll be on your way home. Okay. Right. Did you find your yes. insurance? Sorry. Could you step out of the vehicle, please? Okay. Do you have like a jacket or something? It's, it's you you only have that that blouse and it's a little. Yeah. So come over here in between the two cars where it's a bit safer. Okay. The officer informs Louis that he sees her as just a citizen and nothing more. He says he'd like to perform a field sobriety test on her, to determine if she is fit to drive at that moment. Louis agrees to take the test, and informs the officer she has the vehicle's insurance. The officer informs dispatch he is about to perform a field sobriety test, and requests for backup. He returns to Louis, and asks her to step out of the vehicle. The officer asks Louis if she has a jacket, because it's cold and windy. Louis puts on her jacket, and they walk to the space between both vehicles. Yes, you were speeding. Uh, you were doing 60 on San Francis. The limit is 45. You know, uh, when you crossed uh, San Mateo Street, mm -hmm. the intersection with uh, San Mateo, you were doing 62. All right, so again, out here, the wind is blowing from that direction. 
breath. Mm -hmm. Even I'm, I'm speaking with you, I can smell the alcoholic beverages from your breath. Okay. Okay. So all together, how many drinks did you have all together? Well, I had like three, but I also had food. So can you please remove your glasses? Why? Because I would like to check your eyes. One of the standard sobriety tests is a, an eye test. I like but I see it. better with my glasses. I'm asking you to remove your glasses only for the purposes of the test. The test is going to last approximately 45 seconds, then you'll be able to put your glasses back on. Take your glasses off. It's part of the test. I don't feel comfortable taking on my glasses. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. The officer explains to Lewis why he stopped her and says the speed limit is 45. She was going over 60 when the radar picked her up. He can also smell the alcohol on her breath and asks her how many drinks she has. Lewis says she had three drinks, but then says she had two more. They begin the field sobriety test, and the officer asks Lewis to take off her glasses. She is hesitant because she sees better with her glasses. The officer explained that it was not a vision test, and that they also needed to look at her eyes directly. Lewis refuses and says she doesn't feel comfortable taking off her glasses. Just keep your head still, look at the tip of my pen, and that's it. All right, hold on. Uh, Officer Gluvna, can you do me a favor? Can you turn off that blinker, please? Yes. He's just going to turn off the blinker so we don't have a flashing light right there. Okay. Okay, one more time. We're going to start. Look at the tip of my pen. Okay. Look at it constantly. Don't move your head. Okay. I'm shivering outside. Okay, it's what cold. if I get you some gloves? I have gloves. That's okay, why I'm putting my get hands. Gloves. Get your gloves. You're making this a longer process. The officer begins the test and notices that Louis is unable to stare at the tip of his pen without moving her head. He instructs his partner to turn off Louis's blinkers to help get more accurate results. Lewis complains about the cold, and they proceed to the next test. The officer confirms that she doesn't have any problems walking. Lewis begins walking before the officer instructs her to. She complains about the cold again and says she wants to get home because she has been working all day. The officer understands the complaints, but says they must continue the test. He asks her to cooperate with him and says she should take her hands out of her pockets. Louis refuses, even as the female officer explains that the test won't waste any time. The male officer offers to give her gloves to warm her hands, but she says she owns gloves. Did you understand my instructions? Yes. Okay, hands out of your pockets, right foot in front of the left, One, and go ahead and start. Two, Step it a line. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn. Turn. Right. Proper turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, miss tilt to toe. Step number nine. Very cold. Okay. Okay. Very Come cold. over here. Come over here, ma'am. Stand right there. I did it. Yes. One thousand one. One thousand two. One thousand three. One thousand four. One thousand five. Down. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. One thousand six. One thousand seven. One thousand eight. One thousand nine. Okay, place the foot down. Okay, come over here, ma'am. Come over to the front of my car, where we are away from the wind. Uh, would you give me a sample of your breath in a small machine that I have in my car? No, I'm good. Okay, okay, very well, ma'am. So I'm, I'm placing you under arrest for DUI. Let me ask you a couple of things. Uh, I need to make sure that you don't have anything inside your mouth. Can you please open your mouth? Do you have anything inside your mouth no. that doesn't belong in there? I'll tell you what, come over to the car and we'll read it while you're sitting inside the car so it's uh, the car? a little warmer. Yes. Do you have anything in your pockets I need to know about? No. Needles, knives, anything no. like that? Nothing. 
Louis eventually agrees to take her hands out of her pockets and begins walking before the officer instructs her to. She begins jumping to keep herself warm. She has a hard time listening to the officer's instructions, and he is forced to explain it to her multiple times. Louis finally performs the test, and the officer says there's one more test. He instructs her to raise her foot and count in a particular order. She barely goes through the test, and the officer abruptly stops it. He instructs her to walk to his car and asks if she is willing to perform a breathalyzer test. Lewis refuses, and the officer arrests her because the field sobriety test proves she is intoxicated and unfit to drive. He asks her to turn around and places her in handcuffs. He begins searching her and asks her to open her mouth to ensure she isn't hiding anything in it. The officers take Lewis to the patrol vehicle and pat her to ensure she isn't in possession of any dangerous or illegal items. Inside the car. Listen, because I'm going to tell you something important. Okay. You're under arrest for DUI. That means driving under the influence of alcoholic beverages and or drugs. The New Mexico Implied Consent Act requires you to submit to a breath test to determine the alcohol content of your blood. Did you understand that? Yes. After you take our test, you have the right to choose an additional independent test. Did you understand that? Yes. If you choose to take the additional independent test, you have the right to a reasonable opportunity to arrange for a physician. And here's a question that I'm going to ask you now. Do you agree to take our test? Um, and not, re- not and right I, now, but at and a I'm facility. Referring, so let me, let me place this, let me place this seatbelt here. Can you can you move over? Can you move it by over? Thank you, ma'am. The officers place Louis in the patrol vehicle because it is warmer than standing outside. The officer reads Louis her rights and asks again if she wants to take the breathalyzer test. Louis agrees to take the test but says she'll take it officially at the police department. He informs her that they will tow her vehicle away and she will be given information on how to retrieve it when she is released. The officer fastens her seatbelt and takes Louis to the police department. Georgine Louis was charged with aggravated DWI because her breathalyzer reading was twice the legal alcohol limit, speeding, driving without car registration, and not having car insurance. Sergeant, whoever that is, you got a liar out here. Careful with this one right here, she's a lying right here. There's a lie, I don't give a This incident occurred in Santa Paula, California. A female officer made an illegal traffic stop and attempted to give a man a ticket. She told him he was guilty of some made-up laws, but the man knew his rights. He was well aware of the law and possessed all the documents he needed to defend himself. The female officer refused to listen to him and walked to her vehicle to prepare the ticket. The victim, not having any of her nonsense, continued videoing as he stepped out of his vehicle. He made it known that he knew his rights, and the officer regretted her decision to mess with him. Can I get your driver's license? I don't have it. You can have my ID number. Sure. What's your name? D35 What's your real name? What do you mean? What's your name? D- On your driver's license. D35 is that your driver's license number? Yes, it is. All my information will be on there. What's your name? Don't worry about her. She's a passenger. Not hers. Yours. Oh, what does it well, say on your driver's license? Franklin Ornelas. Okay, when's your birthday? It should be on there. When's your birthday? It should be on there if you want to look it up. Well, I need to know from you. For so what I am I being pulled you. over for? So your plate, that plate is not legal. You have to have the California plate. A female officer makes an illegal traffic stop and approaches a vehicle. The vehicle belongs to a man who took the initiative to record what was about to happen. He was aware that something out of the ordinary was going on, and he had the right to make a video at that point in time. The female officer asks the man for his driver's license and vehicle registration. The man asks her why he was stopped, but she refuses to answer and continues asking for his documents. He says he wasn't driving and is parked, but the officer insists on having his documents. The man informs her he doesn't have his driver's license on him and calls the license number. She asks for his real name, but he says she will get the information when she looks up the license number on the system. The man insists on knowing why the officer pulled him over. 
the officer says his license plate is illegal, and he must have the one that is issued for the state of California. The driver laughs as his passenger is left in shock on hearing this. Do you have your registration proof of insurance? <laughs> you have it? Do you have your registration Shut proof up. of insurance? Do you have your insurance? Silly here. She got mad. You work with feelings or your law enforcement? Is it on your phone? Yes. Okay, well you look it up, I'll be right back. Hurry up. So she's saying my plates are legal, that I have to have California. Red and white, how the f is it not legal if we pay the DMV for them? The officer asks the driver if he has his registration and proof of insurance. The driver confirms that they have it, and his passenger says their license isn't illegal if the DMV issues them. They handed her the registration, but she said it was expired and asked for a current one. The driver asks if the officer is in law enforcement, or if she works based on her feelings. She realizes that they have the proper documents on their phones and returns to her vehicle. The driver and his passenger continue recording and aren't happy with their current situation. It is obvious that the officer is misusing her power and looking for an excuse to get them in trouble. Hurry up! Here, this is our insurance and that's registration for when she gets here. She's not even gonna ask, she's already writing a ticket. For what? Obviously my plates. Sorry guys. I'm getting a crown. Let me stretch my clamp. Let me stretch my clamp. Then you can have a seat on the ground. I'm not going to have you standing outside oh, the car. Hold on, man. Jesus Christ. You need to have a seat. Can in you your relax? Car. I'm getting a cramp. I'm telling you, I'm not Listen, getting out for no reason. You either have a seat in your car or have a seat on the curb over here. Oh. You cannot be standing outside your car. Oh. For not having the proper license plate on your car. What's the real proper? Insurance. I have insurance. And no proper registration. I have them both. Your registration is expired. I have them both. I need a current one. So go get them in the car. So this is without admitting guilt. I promise to appear no. in the time and place. I'm not saying that because I have my insurance Listen, and my proof. Of it says that you're not guilty. It it's fine. So rewrite it. If you don't sign it, you're going to go to so jail. So call me a supervisor. On his All right, way. I'll wait. If you don't sign it, you I'll wait shoot. for him to get here. We need to talk to the supervisor. The driver looks at the officers and asks them to hurry up. They are intentionally keeping him waiting. The passenger gives the driver the current insurance and registration. The driver informs her that the officer won't ask for them because she is already writing a ticket. He decides to step out of his vehicle as he says his leg is cramping up. The officer walks to him and instructs him to either sit in his car or sit on the curb. The man refuses, and the officer returns to her vehicle. She then instructs him to stand by a wall, and he agrees so he can get out of the sun. The officer eventually returns to the man and tries to hand him a ticket. She claims he doesn't have the correct license plate, doesn't have insurance, and has an old registration. The man informs her he has the documents she claims he doesn't have, but she doesn't listen. She tells the man he will go to jail if he fails to sign the ticket. The man asks the officer to call her supervisor and she says he's on his way. It's right here, Ulrich. It's right here, Ulrich? So is that, it's right here, the first name? Sure. Okay. Ma'am, whoever you're calling is like, what are you talking about? Sergeant, whoever that is, you got a liar out here. So here's the thing. What sergeant Make was sure that? You change your plate what, what sergeant so was that? What sergeant was that? What sergeant plate, okay? was that? And then your insurance. What sergeant? Make sure you have it on your phone. What sergeant was that? And then try to get a. What sergeant was that? One of registration in your car. I okay? have them both. Here you since go. you walked away. Have a nice what day. What sergeant was that? Let me get a. Uh, let me get a card with your guys' name and ID numbers before you leave. I'm requesting service. The driver asks the officer for her name and ID number. He also asks what sergeant is en route, and the officer says they're still trying to figure that out. He asks what license plate is correct since it is illegal. 
the officer points at one on a vehicle and says he should have that type on his car. She then says personalized license plates are illegal. The officer speaks to someone over the phone and says the driver is refusing to sign the ticket. The driver speaks loudly and says he has the documents she says he doesn't have. He calls the officer a liar and an idiot for lying against him. The officer returned and claimed the sergeant was giving the driver a verbal warning. She doesn't issue him a ticket and instructs him to change his license plate to match that of the ones issued in California. The driver asks the officer what the sergeant gave the instructions and continues asking as the officer walks away. The officer ignores him, gets in her vehicle, and drives away. Well, that brings us to the end of today's list. We hope you enjoyed this. Do like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get more updates from us. See you next time.